Ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Connell Work. This is Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, perhaps I misspoke because there actually are no Germans on this Orsha East monthly tourney game. Rang, who do we have instead? On left hand side in the blue, we have X Dark playing the third BDV with a Vanguard Income. Right hand side in red, we have a Maimed Wolf playing Task Force Butler with a Maverick Income. And kind of oddly Game of Thrones almost set up to this. You have the Maimed Wolf against this X Dark. Uh, oh, wow. You know, I can, I can only imagine that the left remembers, but perhaps, you know, the right is preparing for winter being the Russians. But, you know, in any case, in any case. Actually, no, I'm sorry, there's Butler over here instead. But looking at this right now, Butler, we've seen these guys before. You know, the VDD, we haven't seen them in a while. But Orsha East, I mean, we, we know how this map kind of plays out. So what's the kind of unique part about this, I, I guess, is kind of always the takeaway here. Why do we care for the VDD as opposed to Butler? Well, as we're seeing with how XART is already deploying so far, I mean, he's got the smoke off map going to be deploying right into the sector. Yeah, it's going to get Destiny Key loaded just in the perfect position. And this is, well, a very, you know, good opener. It's exactly what I'm going to be doing here with VDV. It's just getting up that smoke and bringing in the submachine gun. You have to love that right there, just because it's a brilliant, brilliant idea. Though know, the light rifles, they are good. They're going to be able to do, you know, good work against your Thesan Niki if they can see them. And unfortunately, right now, that lead squad, they can be seen. Mm-hmm. The uh, smoke coverage didn't exactly save them. Yeah, basically, rifles light and defensive positions. Man's a kill. Half of the decent need keys, but the guys aren't going to get in close. And, well, one of the problem with a lot of the Yankee scrods is they don't exactly have SMG spam. No, we can't trust you. We can't trust the, your grunts with that. They can be single Thompson, and you, you take your rounds like your fathers did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the single Thompson is, uh, like, what, 10 Sten guns? Uh, yeah, that's probably true, actually. <laughs> Well, the CGMC in the meantime, though, if you want to bring the CGMC up, that actually would be more than enough in my mind to actually push them back. Especially, even though it's a T-3476, keeping that Command Sherman could be enough to kind of push them back. Of course, I say could, and that's the important thing here, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does have a decent defensive line, at least on the ridge of the hill, so he's not going to be completely pushed back. But at the same time, x Stark does have the town. If he can just bring some extra reinforcements, I do also like what he's doing to the south. Of that little town, bringing in the half tracks and the tanko doesn't need key to try and to secure the forest line. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of an uncommon thing. Usually, we see the you know the western approaches just kind of be like, okay, let's take a machine gun in there, and you have a machine gun over there, and let's just duel back and forth like a really really bad dueling banjo moment. Um, but that that's not happening here. It's a much more aggressive look, and I, I actually have to say, I really really like that kind of play. Mm -hmm. I guess the problem here now for X Dark is. Just trying to deal with all these fire support units. He's going to get one of these Destiny keys pretty close, but, well, machine guns and defensive positions can be quite deadly. So it's going to be very... I mean, with this map, if you get kicked off the central hill, it's usually, well, downhill from in on out. So it's at a pretty critical moment for both sides, wherever the hill will fall. And I guess that's the thing I'm looking over here, is what can be done going the other direction. There is a 105, you know, to bring in the... the... Howard's or commoter carriages here, that actually would be more than enough, I would think. And with the actual income that he has, I mean, he that's a single tick for sure, but still worthwhile. Mm-hmm. And we're already seeing the second snark actually puts very hard with his second reinforcement rave. He's taking quite a lot of casualties, his infantry falling into machine gun fire. But he is slowly but surely picking off the American position here. And actually, his sailor is almost completely fallen. Well, here's the other fun thing, too. If you look down south, he's got all of Main Wolf just, like, screaming back at him in the center. He's got a sucker punch coming into the southern side. Oh, yeah. The tank of Destiny Keys, and you got a single engineer to hold all of it off, so good luck here, buddy. Yeah, kind of kind of a tough sell there. I will say the CGMC in the middle part of the map, though, is quite strong, and honestly, keeping the infantry back is, is probably the best thing he can expect in the middle side there. Yeah, he just needs to really trade himself space but, for time. Yeah. But we can see over here, even though that sucker punch down south is really kind of getting itself set up, the, the center, I think, just continues to be a grind fest galore. And I'm kind of curious. I'm wondering why my Maned Wolf is going to call Mind Wolf, but why Maned Wolf isn't really pushing on the northern side. Yeah, he actually has a very good position here. Manson to, well, I'd say briefly hold the farmstead fully. Oh, that's going to fall to some death need keys. But more importantly, holding the far north. Very good position to be in. You set some anti-tank guns and 
well, fire support for the M4105 is, it will just, you know, blow everything to bits with a B26. So I don't know what... Oh, okay, it's bombing the infantry. Unfortunately, he's going to catch his own guys in the uh, the splash on that. Yep. I mean, he's killed, he's killed two squads. Go for him. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, that, that's still... I don't know. Considering how aggressive the, the VDD can be, I'm not really sure if that's really what I want to have happen. And down south, the rolling smoke advance is, is happening here. This is actually going to be terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. This is extremely, you know, well-prepared and well-planned to deal with a single squad of engineers. It's a little bit overkill, but of course the fog of war does lead to situations like this. But it doesn't really gonna matter if Rex are, because he's gonna get the point. Yeah, there's just a mod deuce and it's a 57 mil, so the half tracks over here are probably going to go down. Um we're having wrong before. I mean the mod deuce is just kind of, you know, tickling more than anything else. And the 57 mil is not actually able to get anything to kill. There we go. About about time. He does get one. And now, I think maybe a 50 cal half track shot you put down enough suppression does get another. He's not going to get all four. He might get three. Yep. Both there. There we go. That's why he's there he might. <laughs> um, but smoke. Tons and tons of smoke. So I would not really like to be the inside of those guys' lungs. But at the same time, they, they've taken the south. The south is completely theirs. Mm-hmm. And it definitely stabilizes things a bit because we're now back to a trove trove here. So honestly, I think for Eckstark, he's almost completely has the hill under his control. Realistically, he just needs to get that one flag, which he doesn't have captured. And he is going to be putting a little bit more pressure once again up north, which makes a lot of sense, is that Farmstead area is a very easy position to try and contest. And considering just how lightly defended the northern side is, it's very much a royal risk. You know, there's the little Katya over here in the middle. And I'm going to find myself kind of fascinated where she might speak because i don't really see them really kind of looking to hit that you know that eastern part of the central hill with that one fly that's right there with the calvary scouts i don't know i i feel like that's really not the best use but i that's all i can really kind of see as being an opportunity you know yeah main dwarf doesn't really have like a huge blob any res forces are actually reasonably spread out which is mostly a good thing in this case so he definitely needs a bit more of a spare punk, so to speak, if you want to try and make anything happen. But speaking of things happening, Xtark using another off-map artillery down south. He's actually mm -hmm. going to be smoking the farm. It's an extremely aggressive move, but he's going to go all out here. It's unusual. It's very, very unusual. I think he's really trying to lean right now on the fact of, yes, I have a Valentine tank, and you only have an M8. Oh, shoot. You have a Sherman. Um, Transmission damage, though. <laughs> it's... Mm -hmm. Took him five years to get to the front lines, but you know what? He can shoot for sure. Yeah, El Sherman's made to be clutch enough here, because he's already stressing out a lot of his infantry. And the smoke actually from the off map does last quite a while, so he does have some time for his foot sloggers to, well, get their ass onto the line. Now, there's the 105 Sherman, who's going to be following, putting some fire on the, the troops in the open. Um, This poor M8 is going to find himself... Riding alone in green fields with the sun on his face. <laughs> He's risely did his reconnaissance and backed out. It's like, yep, they're coming to all just. Now, while that was happening, northern side, there was that, uh, wasn't that sure it was a 45 mil, it might have been a 57 mil. Um, but it's picked off over here, so now there's just a squad of rifles on the northern hill. Hasn't meant a whole lot just yet, but, you know, perhaps it will come to something soon. Because mm -hmm. really, where Mandrel's position is up north, he's kind of at the limit of what he can reasonably take from his position there's really no way you could really attack you can try to get that maximum position in the little farmstead but it's just so close to the enemy spawn and it's a terrible supply line to water area yeah it's, it's just silly to make any moves in that direction it may be silly but don't think that'll stop anybody for half a second there it's also worth mentioning here that we are heading into phase b at this point it's still not the knockout blow that you need to have as, th as third VDD, even if it's against Task Force Butler. Like, you mm -hmm. need to be taking a lot more territory than even what's happening now. And the southern the southern punch is dead. You might see a bombing run... No, it was lightning. So, there we go. There's the Marauder coming in. Going to hammer the busy at 2476-2s. And between that, there's still going to be a couple squads that take Tankos and Desantnikis that are just kind of drifting around. But that's, that's going to shut this down pretty hard. 
Yeah, he definitely overextended the Druid himself and pushed a bit, and also spread out his forces a little bit. I think if he sent... Actually, he's going to get at one farmstead, maybe. I mean, there's maybe. still quite a few rifles, but at the same time, he has Molotovs, Khan, and those are quite spicy drinks. That's true, uh, but even more so, his little Katya over here is going to start speaking towards that 57 mil, which is an interesting call. I mean, it is 15-9. We are seeing that the northern side over here is going back to blue, and I want to see Katya speak. Mm-hmm. She she doesn't have a lot to say just yet, but she's she's aligning slowly. So we'll see yeah. something soon. And just looking at the front line here, like just once again, unit density is a whole lot of blue on the left, and it is red stuff on the right. And that's just well, really, main dwarf has invested a lot in more, uh, you know, regular tanks, Shermans, M10s, the M15s, and his infantry, as we've seen, you know, before last week, the Butler infantry is good, but you don't get a whole lot of him. And especially against Desert Neathy spam, which are cheap and also pretty good, it kind of screws you over in these CQC fights. It does. It does. I'm finding myself over here at the same time watching as things like Marauder comes to the northern side, going to pound this artillery position. Going to kill one, not both, but one at least. And I'm finding myself wondering, where's the long tom? I feel that would actually give it a nice bit of utility that he doesn't currently have on that map. But hey. I'm just a man, a simple man who likes his uh his artillery in life. So, hmm, we will see. Yeah, well, the hill mm -hmm. please. Pretty much completely has fallen. Narek Stark has managed to get to the edge, and the Valentine Mark Nines for third VDV are really good unit, especially in this match up when you're only up against M10s and M4s. Is you essentially just use them as anti-tank gun emplacements with a bit of armor. And especially now, he's gotten the geography he needs. He just needs to hold at his point, especially at 15-9. And the Valentine Mark 9s will definitely allow him to do that. This is, here's an interesting thought, though. We, we're seeing a lot of rallies being rallied. He's bringing two squads to the hill. Another squad over here just kind of pick things up for half a second. I'm not saying these guys are going to turn the tide themselves. But we actually could see a nice bit of aggression going back onto the central hill. Not these dudes down to the south. These guys are doomed. Um, but everybody else... Has the potential of actually doing something very, very interesting, I would say. Mm hmm. Yeah, and the rallies just really ran into the wrong forest line there. It's just taking them quite a while to gun them down. Good God. And even more interesting, look, Katya's going after the, F and the M4 105. Interesting thought. But hey, mm. sure. Yeah, it's actually quite interesting. At the same time, I don't want to criticize too much about his MLRS target choices because. There's not really a whole lot of juicy targets for him to even shoot to begin with. Everything is, well, quite spread out. And actually, a very. I also think I was kind of screwing over main dwarf a bit here is the heavy investment in air power. He just needs a good frontline infantry to hold the front line. But, well, <laughs> he's not going to have much of a front line left for him to actually hold. That That is fair. That is certainly fair. Uh, we have seen the 57 mil do pretty well for themselves. Not not perfect, mind you, but well enough that they might be able to get the Valentines, take out a couple of the T-34-76s. But it just comes down to the fact that that early decent Nikki push is just brutal. Yeah, like a one to do punch or smoke off map and decent Nikki is really the bread and butter of how you have to play third VDV. And that opener definitely set him in a very good position. True. True. Like, venereal diseases everywhere, and it requires you to get up close and personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately... And confidence. Oh, that's true. A lot of confidence. And then you just have to get, you know, just got to hammer away until something happens. <laughs> <laughs> and demonetized. Um, Marky starts in the meantime, coming in the center, and these guys are not going to be enough to turn this back around, especially when you have Zis 2s kind of having Overwatch on them. That's going to just absolutely go to, you know, destroy here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially that position that Stark now has, just that little town on the bottom slope of that hill. Yeah, it's pretty much the death now, yeah, for main draw. It's not just, oh, he just has to get up the hill, he has to first clear out a town, and there's a decent amount of open space between you and said town. This is true, and yet we see plucky things like the M8 come running up on the off chance he can actually pick off things, be very, very cheeky. Unfortunately, as good as a Greyhound might be, um, they can still get their legs broken very easily. Yeah. Very, very easily. Mm -hmm. Like, Mains has been doing pretty decent with just, a, especially the Greyhound maneuvers and using his tanks, but 
he just doesn't have enough of him, and he's having to... Well, he's kind of in a bad spot, because if he just buys infantry right now, he doesn't have any fire support to back him up. But now he's buying all supply, fire support, such as his M4 76 mils, but he has no infantry to do any screening for him. Yeah, and, and therein is the rub, as the bard might say. But we, we do see small moments, small gasps, if you will, of life. Northern side, there's an M8 that's got Tango de San Nikis and a, and a half-track on their heels. I mean, such as it is. You have some troops over there in the back that are just kind of going and being very, very, you know, horrible to the Stromoviki with rocks kind of coming on through. So those guys are getting zippoed. Um, but I wonder if this 85 mil, okay, the 85 mil something brought around. Interesting there. So, Maid Wolf, despite the fact that he's getting kicked in the teeth, he's not giving up. But you have to respect a little bit. I don't, I don't know that's going to come back for him necessarily, but you have to respect <laughs> the fight in this dog. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to bring out the Fury in his tanks to try and get his kills here. There's not, there's not a whole lot of scary anti-tank on the field. There's a few 45 mils. I guess he has U-76s now. But it's really just a whole lot of infantry. He has to plow his way through. And, well, it's just... A, it takes time. You need a lot of machine gun bullets to kill all those decent need key to make him descent for good. Even with those DTs as well. So the triple DT on the decent Nikki DTs, like, that, mm, mm. Odd, mm. oddly delicious. I know. It's like the Super Brain group. Yes, it is. Also, apparently he decided, Maned Wolf that is, that uh, cleaving a couple people from the pack is worth it if he can kill at least one of the enemy. Down south, he put the smoking craters. Somewhere in there you'll see red. That used to be some of his troops. Um... Unfortunately, now it's just kind of a more of a meat bully base, so uh, problems there. Yeah, and we're seeing. I'd, yeah, I'd really argue like the final attack here from Main Draw. If he's got all of his monkey sides ready to go, and where are they? Okay, they're going all the way in the far north here to try to resecure the yeah, forest position. And if he can do that, he could probably stabilize a bit by at least trying to get that little farmstead where the M8 is. Problem for him though is that the 85 mil and a couple T 3476s are kind of hoofing it onto the front here as well, and the M4A1 is not going to be enough for sure. And if he gets forced back or killed, well, that's the other issue with Task Force Butler is that you don't have a whole lot of a AT on your infantry. Mm hmm. But we are kind of an issue. Very much an issue. B-26 come back to the center again. This guy's going to be forced back off, courtesy of that 37mm pop gun. And I think you're right. I think this is the the last big attempt here. And, oof, the first Marquis starts getting roasted like s'mores. And the Strumboviki says, I'll take some more of that. Kills a couple other guys and goes down, but not before having a flame war, the likes of which has not been seen since the invention of the internet. <laughs> Indeed, but it's definitely just a very good position in the rocks because it slowed down that push, ruined a little bit of momentum. The Mackie Sards now having to go on foot to make the final push onto the farmstead here. And that's going to buy him time for these T-34s to get into position. Yes, indeed. And you see right now, engaging at long range. Those Mackie Sards are like, dude, wait, wait, AT? What's that? It's not like, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, re it's real bad. It's real, real bad. Um... There's a piece of me that's thinking we probably think it's the times two of here. We said 1910, perhaps. Yep, let's do that. Okay. So, as the, the it seems like the last seconds of this game kind of start to kind of bring themselves together, you know, again, we have nothing against Task Force but, um, Butler. It's a very, very dynamic division, but the problem is that you have to be extremely efficient and aggressive early on. It's a very, very fine line to play. Yeah, you just don't have the reinforcements, with, unlike other even Rust divisions, so to speak. And you do have a lot of expensive units as well. And yeah, if you just lose that A phase, and especially with how offensive X Dark Rosroof is, off map artillery, Descent Need Key combo, it's very hard to get your way back. Because also, yeah, it's the expensive infantry, even though American infantry can be pretty good, but now I've bought the DLC Power Creep. You know, just having cheap spam infantry with some weird Eastern European SMG is really the way to go now. Oh, absolutely. And you can see right now over here with the M4A1, just the center part of the map, legs broken, bleeding out, and unfortunately Task Force Butler does not find itself equal to the task. We are going to see a tap out just before, you know, the official oh, wow. kill. That's, yeah, what? Really, that really close. How? I did not see that close. 
I think it might be because we're seeing things like dead T-34s, dead Valentines, which, which while they are not, you know, King Tigers, are still valuable enough to maybe kind of keep things more even. Mm-hmm. No, that's actually, that really changes my perspective of that match now, because as we saw with, you know, well, my four eyes and your two, um, like, it just wasn't a whole lot of stuff on the field here for uh, main draw. But he had the same amount of stuff. He was trading just as efficiently, but his stuff was just more expensive and was less spammy. That's very, very true. And folks, before we go any further, I just want to mention real quick that the two eyes he's talking about is actually a, a glass eye on one side with an eye patch over it and a monocle on the other. So I had mm -hmm. two good ones, but the other one's pretty much gone. Um, look at the kills. There was one 57 mil. Valentine, two T-34s, and an SU-76. Now, we barely saw the SU-76s on my side just because of, you know, like I said, two eyes up rather than four. You have four more, you know, got a couple more on me. But looking at both cases, I yeah, I didn't expect this to be that close either in terms of points. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm just quite surprised. I also think it's the, um, the B-26s just coming in and blowing everything to hell and back. I think the other thing here, too might be the fact that the M4A1s are still pretty darn expensive, and yeah, I think he's picked up nearly every single one of those that was on the field. Oh, yeah. When you get six of them on 85 points, that does add up. It certainly does. Uh, but any final thoughts there, sir? No. Well, folks, in that case, then, until next time, I'm Con Ulrich. Uh, I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.